by Allah, and then they will never be led astray, and those who are astray will never be guided except by Allah, and their Ibn witness that there's no deity worthy of worship by Allah, and that Muhammad is his messenger, peace be upon his family, his companions, and his followers. Dear brothers and sisters, our lecture tonight will be about a story that the Prophet, peace be upon him, told his companions and hence us, in which there is a great model of standing up to the truth and standing up to the right and sacrifice and patience over harm and this is the story of the servant of the daughter of the pharaoh and she was basically assigned the job of uh, combing her hair combing the hair combing or uh, combing the hair of the daughter of uh, the pharaoh and she was a believer she was a muslim and she hid her belief she hid her faith. She hid her faith in order not to be uh, hurt. And eventually when it turned out that she was a believer, she was harmed big time because of that. The hadith was narrated by Imam Ahmad through the authority of Abdullah ibn Abbas. Abdullah ibn Abbas, may Allah be pleased with them. He said that the Prophet peace be upon said, when it was the night in which I was brought to Jerusalem in the Isra night, I smelled a very nice scent. So I asked Jibreel, what is this beautiful scent? He said, this is the scent of the servant of the daughter of Pharaoh and her children and her children. So the Prophet peace from here was uh, talking about his journey of Al-Isra al Maraj, the night in which he was taken uh, in a journey to Jerusalem and then was ascended to heaven. And he smelled a very beautiful, very nice scent. And uh, Sheikh says, don't forget that uh, in that journey he saw the paradise, the Jannah. So, and the Jannah is full of beautiful scents. And to talk about a specific scent amongst these beautiful scents, for sure that means that this is a very special thing, very special scent. So uh, he asked Jibreel, what is this special scent? What is this beautiful scent? He said, it, it is the scent of the, the, the servant of the daughter of uh, the Pharaoh and her children. And uh, because uh, retribution is, is, is of the same type of the deed, uh, you will know that because they were burnt alive for the sake of Allah, because they were burnt alive for the sake of Allah, and because their flesh and skin were scorched, their, their skin was scorched, and smelled like burnt. Allah subhanahu wa made their uh, uh, smell turn into a beautiful scent until the judgment day. Until the judgment day. So the retribution comes to be of the same type, comes compliant to the deed. And because they were burnt alive for the sake of Allah, and because their skins were scorched for the sake of Allah, were scorched for the sake of Allah, and because uh, they smelled like burnt. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, made that or uh, converted that into a beautiful scent in the paradise. So what happens, the Prophet peace be said, the Prophet peace be said, that while she was combing the hair, while she was combing the hair of the daughter of uh, the Pharaoh one night, she dropped the comb. She dropped it. So she stretched out to fetch that comb, to, uh, to, uh, to pick that comb. So when she stretched out, when she reached out, when she reached out to pick that comb, she said, Bismillah, in the name of Allah. In the name of Allah, Bismillah. 
So here, because Sheikh says uh, there is uh, a rule in our religion that the Sharia of those before us is the Sharia of ours, unless it conflicts with our Sharia, then that means here if you drop something and you are uh, you are reaching out to pick it, then you say Bismillah. Do like she did, because what she did here does not conflict with any of our rules. And the Sharia of those before us is our Sharia unless it conflicts with our Sharia. So basically this woman was hiding her faith. Why? Because Pharaoh would, tur were, were put, would, would put under tremendous torture, tremendous torment anyone who would uh, show his faith or her faith. Uh, because he claimed to be God. So how dare you claim that you have another God other than him? So if you claim that you have another God other than him, he would torment you big time. That's exactly what he did. Sheikh says there are no, some people who cannot help but have a tongue that always mentions the name of Allah. Even if they try to hide their faith, it just shows up on them because they are faithful. So she dropped the she dropped the kum and she when she was reaching out to pick the kum, she didn't help but mention the name of Allah because her tongue was always moisted with the mention of the name of Allah. Her tongue was always moisted by that. So. The daughter of the Pharaoh said, you mean my father? She said, no, I mean the God of your father and the God of mine. She said, you have another God other than my father? So when she, when she was reaching out to pick the kum, she said, Bismillah, in the name of Allah. She said, my father, the daughter of the Pharaoh said, you're, 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 you're picking the comb and you're saying in the name of, name of my father. She said, no, I'm saying in the name of the God of your father and of me. She couldn't hide it. See, it's just some of the interpreters of the hadith said that maybe she 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 uh, she thought that eventually it's gonna it's gonna turn out to appear eventually it's gonna show up on her so she eventually gave up on it and said my god and the god of your father is allah she said should i tell him about that the daughter of the pharaoh told him told her told her should i tell him about that should i tell my father about that she said go ahead she didn't even care. Go ahead. You do whatever you want. She, at that, at that point, uh, point, uh, point of time, she, she knew that she'd be uh, tormented big time or tortured big time. So she didn't really pay that much attention anymore. So Pharaoh summoned her. He summoned her. The daughter of Pharaoh basically went to the Pharaoh and said, my servant, dropped the comb, and then when she was reaching out to pick it, she said, in the name of Allah, I asked her, who is that? She said, your God, I the God of her father, and my God. So he summoned her, and he said, hey, you, servant, do you have another God other than me? She said, yes, your God, and my God is Allah. It's like the Prophet peace be said, and listen to this beautiful hadith. The Prophet peace be said, the master of the the master of the murders is Hamza, and someone who stood up to a tyrant ruler and told him, told him, your God and my God is Allah. So the Prophet peace be said, honoring his uncle, honoring his uncle, he said, the master of the murders is Hamza, his uncle, and a man or someone who stood up to a tyrant ruler and told him that your Lord and my Lord is Allah. So look at this weak, supposed to be weak servant, how strong she became standing up to Pharaoh. And you have no idea who Pharaoh is. You need to, to read about the stories of Pharaoh to know, to know how tyrant he was. He was as tyrannic as it gets. To be, mentioned, to be mentioned in the Quran and to be given as an example for tyranny, you need to go beyond all the thresholds that are needed. So he basically went overboard. He, he crossed all the thresholds that you might think of. He claimed to be God. So basically for someone, for a servant to stand up tyrant, how strong this is, how strong this is. 
So he ordered a huge, uh, put, a huge, a huge plot, um, made of copper. Now he was, uh, then he, these guys were, were artists when it comes to torture. He brought a big pot, he ordered a, a big pot to be custom made for her. He brought a big pot made of copper, made of copper. This big pot big, made of uh, uh, copper and it was heated. It was heated and, was heated and heated and heated and it became very heated. And then he ordered that she and her children get thrown into that pot. Now she declared her faith. What about her children? These are very young children. They can't even talk yet. Very young children. Why would they be tormented? What a tyrant. I mean, the, uh, oh, oh, this woman, she declared her faith. But her children are very young. They didn't even know how to, how to, uh, they didn't even talk yet. They haven't even started talking yet. Some of them haven't even started talking yet. So he ordered that she and her children be thrown into the pot that is heated. She said, I just need you to do me one wish, to fulfill one wish for me. He said, what is this wish? He said, she said, when I melt in the pot, or, uh, or when I die, when I, when I burn in, in, in this inferno, gather all my bones and the bones of my children, all of them in one sack, and bury us together, bury our bones together. Which he says, which means that. Uh, under a tyrant rule, someone can ask that tyrant. That, uh, someone can ask a tyrant for something that uh, would uh, that he would need. So Sheikh says, uh, so, so the, the, the Pharaoh, Pharaoh said, I owe you that one. That's why everybody left. It's like he's going to burn it alive. Yet he said, I owe you that one. That's fine with me. I can gather your bones and the bones of your children and drop in the same sack and drop you in whatever uh, grave that you want me to do that. I have no problem doing that. I owe you that one. So he said, I owe you that one to bury you the way you want. So look, look, at, look at the tyrant. He ordered her children to be thrown first before her own eyes. So her children, one after the other, were thrown into the inferno before her own eyes. He wanted her to see her children thrown into the, into the fire before her own eyes first. He wanted, uh, he wanted her to be tormented with that kind of sight, with that kind of scenery, horrible scenery, until he reached to the youngest one, who was just a baby, not even able to talk yet. So when she saw that baby, she started to get more reluctant. Oh my God, what am I doing here? She started to get reluctant. She started to get reluctant because of that baby. He's, he's not even able to talk yet. Very young baby, uh, an infant. So here was the point where the baby, who was an infant, who cannot even talk yet, started speaking. He spoke. He said, Mom, throw yourself into the, into the fire. You are on the right path. Oh my God. She says, just her, her human part showed up because of her children getting thrown into the fire one after the other, but this one is an infant. He is still uh, feeding at the breast, and he, he was very, very young, just probably born uh, a few months or so, a few months old or so, and he started talking. He said, my mother, 
Go ahead, you are on the right path. The torment of this life is nothing compared to the torment of the hereafter. So she went ahead and threw herself into the, into the inferno. Now here, the interpreters of the hadith want to uh, tackle one specific issue that some ask. It's just a suicide. The answer, of course not. She didn't have any option. It's, it, it, the, option here, the option here is either to throw her, herself into that inferno or to claim that Pharaoh is God. And she was not going to do that. She was not going to do that. She was not going to submit to Pharaoh as God. Pharaoh was not God. Pharaoh was a human. Plus, and this is what Sheikh said, if she did not throw herself into the fire, Pharaoh was going to do that himself, throw her into the fire with her soldiers. So again the question now here for people who are anal, why didn't she wait until the soldiers threw her by themselves rather than herself throwing herself into the fire? Well, the, the answer she knows that she's going to be killed anyways. And for her to wait until they threw her into the fire, she looked like the one who's afraid of Pharaoh and she wanted to make a point that you own nothing. You are just nothing but a human like me. And I'm going to make you or prove that you are nothing, that you are as weak as it gets. And I am strong because of my faith. That is the point she wanted to make. And she made it. I don't care about your torment. I don't care about your inferno. I don't care about anything. All I care about is my faith and my belief in Allah, my Lord, and the Lord of the mankind. So the son, the infant, the one who's few months old, talked at the and said, my mom, go ahead, you are on the right path. The torment of this life is nothing if compared to the torment of the judgment day. And then Abdullah ibn Abbas wanted to add one point here. He said, four infants talked in the cradle. Jesus, the son of Mary, peace be upon them. And the, uh, the child of the, the story of Juraj. And the third. Jesus, the son of uh, Mary, peace, peace be upon them both. And uh, the child of the story of Juraj. And the witness of Joseph, and we'll know about the, the witness of Joseph. The witness of Joseph is the one that came in the chapter of Joseph, the one that said if his shirt was pulled from the back, then he is innocent, and she is a liar, and if his shirt was pulled from the front, then she is a, uh, uh, innocent, and he is a liar. That was a child. That was an infant. That was an infant. Sheikh says, Abdullah ibn Abbas said that he was an infant, according to Abdullah ibn Abbas, and he was amongst her family, um, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted to talk to prove the innocence of Joseph, and the fourth, and, and so these children spoke, uh, the three of them, the first three spoke to vindicate, vindicate people that were accused. Uh, uh, were accused and, and, and they were innocent in fact. The first is Mary, she was accused of adultery and she is one of the purest women of the world. And the second was uh, Juraj who was accused of adultery and and he was vindicated and the third is uh, Joseph when he was vindicated by this child saying or talking about uh, how they would prove that uh, he is innocent and the fourth 
is the baby that we talked about at the beginning of this of the series when we talked about the Jewish uh, uh, or the Jew who was uh, breastfeeding her, her child, her baby, her infant uh, when a uh, a, uh, a man uh, came across them and he was on top of his horse and looked very uh, handsome and very good looking and uh, the mother said oh my god make uh, my son like this man and, uh, and the infant uh, said no I don't want to be like oh my god let, oh, oh god do not make me like this man and when he they, they saw a woman being uh, accused of adultery and being uh, beaten by her uh, uh, master or by, by uh, the people around her uh, she she said oh Allah do not make my son like this uh, woman and he said oh Allah make me like this woman and he said to his mother uh, the first was a uh, tyrant and the second was an innocent uh, servant. There are many benefits that we can get from this hadith, or many lessons that we can learn. Well, the well, first lesson is this model of stability on the faith, this model of sacrifice, this model of strength and ability to defy a tyrant like Pharaoh and again you have no idea how tyrant this man would be unless you really read about his stories he was as tyrannic as it gets for someone to be mentioned in the Quran as a tyrant it takes really a tyrant to be mentioned by Allah in the Quran as a tyrant it takes really someone to cross all the thresholds that he can imagine so she stood up to him and she stood, uh, she, she stood up for the truth and she didn't care. In history there are many examples, even the modern history, she says, the contemporary history, there are stories that we can hear from uh, the days of the uh, me medievals, the days of the medievals uh, and many of the things that, uh, or many of the, many of the times that uh, the Muslims faced, uh, probably one of the nearest uh, is what the Albanians uh, faced by the, the Albanians of Kosovo uh, faced and uh, the, 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 what the Muslims of Bosnia and Herzegovina faced at the, under the, the, the uh, hands of the Serbs and, and, and many examples in the modern history. It also, prove, it also uh, tells us one, one more story about uh, Isra al Maraj. And it also gives us a proof or tells us that uh, Muslims or believers uh, will be experiencing a lot of joys in the grave or in the life of the grave, which is the next one. And it also tells us how Allah SWT will honor will honor his uh, people who believe in him and that he vindicates them and proves their innocence by miracles if it gets if it takes that for Jesus he was a prophet and he had lots of other miracles but for some others they were not prophets and they didn't or sh w would not expect miracles but miracles happened to them because of how close to Allah they were and another uh, benefit of the hadith another lesson that we should learn from the hadith is how keen or how fervent a Muslim should be to be buried according to the Sharia of Islam look at this woman under this, these circumstances these tough circumstances yet she asked Pharaoh she said I, sh I want to be buried this way according to the, Islamic, uh, to the Sharia of Islam another lesson is one that we keep bringing up every now and then which is that the retribution is of the same type of the deed because she threw herself into that inferno for the sake of Allah and she was burnt and her uh, skin was scorched and smelled like burnt Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made her uh, have a beautiful scent uh, in the paradise forever you mentioned about Firon which Firon was that there are many 
The word Pharaoh is a title for anyone who ruled Egypt during a certain period of time. And most of them were tyrants. So, but here, the interpreters of the hadith said that this Pharaoh was the Pharaoh of Moses. <laughs> was uh, the Pharaoh who uh, was contemporary of Moses and uh, his wife was a believer by the way too and one of his relatives was a believer and uh, when he knew that his wife was a believer he dug a trench for her in the earth and in the ground he dug a trench for her in the ground and uh, uh, stretched her body between ropes and kept on pulling the ropes uh, but the angels came and gave her support so that's when she said oh Allah built for me a house in the paradise and save me from Pharaoh and his uh, people well, she is the one who said that I don't know if that was the point in which she said that but she is the one who said that oh Allah save me from Pharaoh and his people Allah subhanahu wa stabilizes those that he wants. So she is the wife of a tyrant and yet she is faithful subhanAllah. And relatives, from, uh, relatives of Pharaoh you see faithful and they would stand up for that, stand up to that tyrant and defy him. Which might uh, be very odd or very uh, strange for some but when faith is in the heart